you deserve the glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We greeted Bazalwan and I'm and welcome to day two of our upper room experience. What a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. Can I just give you this moment to invite somebody, to call them, to remind them. I know we have been welcomed. I know we have joined in worship. But can I just give you this time to worship the Lord? And crown him, Lord of all. You are Lord, you are Lord and Ambama. We crown you, we crown you. Bring forth the royal diadem. We crown you, Jesus. Can you just take this time and soak in the presence of the Lord? This is why we are here. We are here. We are here. Where you are, can you just not be distracted? But just, 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 just clock in. Just, just, just clock in. The presence of the Lord is here. We crown him, Lord of all. We give you praise, O oh Father. We honor you tonight. Oh, all hail the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, all hail, all hail the King. All hail the one who rules, the one who reigns. All hail, oh Father. We bring forth the royal diadem to crown you, to crown you, to crown you as Lord of all, as Lord of all. Come on, wherever you are, can you just take this moment? and worship Jesus who shena hasuni na haya who liba suni na kapataya imando ziala saya we worship you God we worship you Jesus we worship you we worship you we crown you Lord of all we crown you Lord, oh, we crown you, you are Lord, oh, we crown you, oh, we crown you with many crowns, we crown you, Lord of all, we crown you, Lord, oh. We welcome you, Bazalwane, to day two of our Upper Room Conference, Terry and Till Upper Room Experience 2024, your 2024, Terry and Till. Come on, as we have asked, please remind somebody, text somebody, Text somebody in your comment, tell them that we are gathered here. We are gathered here. And my advice to you is that you will not be distracted. My advice to you is that you will not miss this just because we are virtual. I can feel the presence of the Lord already. He's here. He's here. He's here. And yesterday we started Bazalwan. Such a beautiful time we've had in the presence of the Lord. As Unkulunkul is encouraging us to come up here. He told us, Uguti, there are things he needs us to see. I believe, Uguti, as you took time, even from yesterday, your eyes are getting opened, that the vision is getting clearer. And even now, Bazalwane, I urge you, I urge you to take this time and come up here. 
We have come again, and it's only a pleasure once again to welcome you, Bazalwani, on this day two of our conference. I am here to share the word once again. My name is Precious Como, Pastor Precious Como, the host in this conference, Bazalwani. Uh, we are the Fortress of Hope Church International here in Midrand. We want to greet our father, the Bishop, Bishop Mtun, Beno Apostle Mtun who is our spiritual covering. We want to greet Bonka Bazalwane that are joining from all over. All the men of God and the women of God, we honor you, Bazalwane. Thank you for taking your time to join. Thank you for taking your time to honor our invitation. We greet you, Usekai and Amsanje. We greet you as you are traveling, as you are in transit, wherever you are. We even greet those that will join us later. We know that the word of the Lord is always fresh and we believe there is something for you. Allow me to share what is in my heart once again. I believe the spirit of the Lord has placed it in us, not just to share it, but because he wants us to experience it. We are in, our, in the upper room experience, just like in Acts chapter 1. And he, and he ascended up to the heavens. They went up to the upper room where the Bathang and Akona in one accord in prayer and supplications. That's why you'll recognize you see, the most thing that we are doing in these 10 days. We are just praying, we are just supplicating, we are gathering in intercession, we are interceding, praying for our families, praying for our countries, for our nations, praying for our communities. Unity. And I want to encourage you, Guti, if you have a special prayer request um, that you have, do write it on the comment. Um, allow us to partner with you because what we are doing in the upper room, um, as we tarry, we tarry in prayer, our posture in waiting um, is a posture of intercession, um, of praying and seeking um, the face of God. Um, so do write if you have an, a, a prayer item um, you would like us to mention. Let's go to God with it. We believe he's hearing us. But today, allow me, Bazalwane, to just say this. It's a simple thing, but I really believe that God wants to do something about it. I have something in my heart that says encounters that change lives. Encounters that change our lives. And I will just take this from the experience Yabafundi in the upper room and just look at different people in the scriptures that encountered something that changed their lives. And the reason for this, Bazalwane, it's because um, I have realized that on our daily lives, um, we have different encounters with different things, um, with different people. Um, we meet people, we meet different people, um, we encounter different things. Um, but that is able to change, that speaks to, to kingdom karma. Some of the changes that we have experienced Experience uh, because of the encounters we have had, um, they are not about the kingdom experience, uh, they are not about the kingdom come. Um, when Jesus teaches his disciples uh, in Matthew chapter. Uh, chapter 6 to pray uba fundisa njengu verse 10 uthi abothi mabethandaza our father who is in heaven hallowed be thy name maseti your kingdom come your will be done it is in the heart of god that whatever we are doing whenever we get whatever our daily lives are about that they are about the kingdom come i want to say to us rather to remind us, um, that the agenda and the mandate has not changed. Um, the agenda still is kingdom come. The mandate is thy will be done on earth. Um, and as Abba Zalwane who are saved, those who are called um, by the name of Jesus, um, it has not changed. Um, I know at times we gather, we talk, um, and we make it seem um, as if it is about Zintozetum. At times we gather because we need help. Um, at times 
times we get up because we need answers to our prayers. You know, some need him sevens, some need healing, some need houses, some need marriages, and maybe there's nothing wrong with that. But the issue is that is not the mandate. That is not the agenda and the heartbeat of heaven right now. And when God calls us to the upper room, ufuna to ugusvala, he wants to appetite for every other thing but to loudly declare to us that the agenda remains and the agenda even now is the agenda that kingdom come when you read to psalms 24 it says who will ascend this will be from verse 3 who will ascend the holy hill of the, the holy mountain of the Lord and who will stand in his holy place but Zalwane Unkulunkulu is calling us to come to him is calling us to ascend yesterday we spoke about how Jesus is telling them to remain in Jerusalem until the Lord is calling us to ascend so that we can stand before him uh, until until uh, he finishes the work he has started uh, until his agenda is completed. Uh, but when you read uh, Psalms 24, Lizot is such is a generation uh, that seek your face, uh, the generation of Jacob. Uh, and in my heart, I've been saying this to Abba Zalwane, Uguti, there is a generation within a generation. Uh, we are living in a generation, uh, but God is calling us to come up here. God is calling us to the upper room because he wants us to be a generation within a generation. Angel and let generation a generation within a generation. It's a generation of those that seek him. It's a generation of those who are able to tarry. Those who are able to wait until they encounter is something that will change their lives. Our God is intentional about encountering us or rather us uh, encountering him uh, because we ought to be a solution to our generation uh, because we there are things um, um, kabashet, um, I, I think this was on our first installment um, of upper room um, what uh, there are there are there are glories um, there are installments of glory that are, 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 are released for a generation um, and those that only seek him um, those that take time to seek him um, become a generation, a generation um, within a generation, um, a generation that seek God um, so that they can find his heart, um, so that they can contend um, for the glory in a generation. And today I want to speak um, on encounters that change lives. Not just the life of the one who has encountered it, but the lives of those that will meet a person that has encountered. And as I said, some encounters, when we meet them, yes, they change our lives, but they do not speak to a kingdom come agenda. But tonight, I want to let you know that when God calls us to the upper room, the idea, Uguti, we will encounter him, is that we will have such an encounter count up that will leave our lives marked for life um, that will leave us marked for life um, so that we can be part of that generation within a generation uh, it's in it is in the book of acts um, who turn cities upside down um, these are a different kind um, these are a different caliber um, 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 benzini, because they have encountered something um, and and today I want to create as well an appetite for you to encounter something that will set you apart. Amen, Basalwan. When you read Acts chapter 2, let's quickly go to the word. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Listen, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all one. We, they were all with one accord in one place. Master Sia Jamba said, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be, be this known unto you and hearken unto my words. And then he continues to say what he is saying. I'll come back to it now. But allow me to also couple this with Isaiah chapter 6. I like from verse 1, but allow me to 
to just read to verse 5 for the sake of time. Verse 5 says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. But for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And lastly, Bazalane, the one, one I want to read among it, I will speak through them. It will be Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 6. Verse 3, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Verse 6, And trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what shall you do. Father, we thank you for this word. Open our ears to hear what you are saying to us. And grant us utterance even tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to start with in the Baga Isaiah Bazalwan. We know Isaiah, this is in chapter 6. Isaiah is a prophet, and from chapter 1, he's been prophesying, speaking, you know, things, speaking of Christ. And, and you know, he's just one of those major prophets, if you can call them, in the Bible. And but here in chapter 6, we meet with Isaiah having an encounter. Little Pipe in the year that King Uzziah died, some Something happened to Isaiah. Liti, he saw the Lord. And Umembona, Liti, he saw him seated on his throne. And the trail of his rope has filled the tent. He saw him being God. He saw him lifted up. He saw him exalted. But most importantly, he saw him holy. Liti, Pipeli, Wati, Maembona, there were angels, the elders that were singing, singing to him holy. Holy, holy is the Lord. And Isaiah, when he saw him holy, there was something about what he saw. Yesterday we spoke about how God wants us to come to the upper room so that we can see. Not just hear, but see. Because we can only have what we see. And Isaiah, when he saw how holy God was, we find him recognizing how unholy he was. This is what the upper room experienced experience should be for us. When we approach him and when we are found in his presence, the first thing that happens, it shows us who we are. It brings who we are to the surface and not just in a judgmental way, but in a way that causes us to want to repent. It brings what the Bible calls godly sorrow that leads one to repentance. As we come to the presence of the Lord and as we behold him, as we worship him, and as he starts to reveal himself to us, among the things that he does is to show us who we are, is to show us how unclean we are, is to start to show us the environment. And this is what also speaks and feeds our intercession. The moment we get a revelation of a God we are praying for, we we start to see who we are and don't feel embarrassed um, no feel judged to a point of wanting to run away um, but just like Isaiah Liti cried out um, what he wore unto me I am undone. There is something about the presence of the Lord um, that takes away our pride um, that takes away even our self-righteousness um, that takes away the things we justify ourselves in Gaza, but it shows us um, in the light of who God is. And whenever we reflect or we project from who God is, our lives get to see what is short. And this is not necessarily a bad thing, but it becomes a point of repentance. It becomes a point where our lives are changed. We see this with Usol who was 
was once, who then was sent into Paul. He was on his journey. He was set on his agenda. But Liti then on his way, a light shone on him. A light so bright that everyone could see, but not everyone could hear. Who are you? Introduce them. I am the Lord that you are persecuting. And this is what Paul says. You know when we are we are finding ourselves in this upper room and we project from the light of who God is. As I said, the, our agenda starts to change. We start to stop pursuing our things. No matter how important we think they were. Remember, Usol was on an agenda of protecting God, of protecting religion as he knew it. But there was this encounter that made him to cast down his agenda. That made him to cast down his own thoughts. And the next question was, Kosi, what would you have me do? There is a level of encounter. Firstly, as I said, according to Isaiah, that shows you, Uguti, where do you lack? That shows you how much you need the mercies of God. That shows you, Uguti, yinenge koraitingawe. But it's not from a point of but just like who is I am, you get to be reintroduced to your to your assignment. Little is I in Galosia Fig, Yam Tintangela with a burning coal in his in his mouth. And he told him, you are now clean. And then he was given an agenda to go and prophesy. But now he is reintroduced from a point of who God is, from a reverence of the holiness of who God is. Some of us, we need this encounter of the upper room so that our, our, our journeys, so that our calling can be redefined, so that we will not move from a place of being gifted, but we will move from a place of who God is, so that we won't do things because we are able to do them and we are gifted in doing them, but we will do them because the holiness and the agenda of God um, has become um, who we are. So even today Bazalwane, I ask you that you allow this agenda you allow this encounter to lead you to a place of repentance. Um, but secondly just like Paul, um, this encounter causes you to set your agenda aside. You start to ask, what would you have me do? I believe this is the conversation that God wants us to have with him. Because most of us, we come to a place of prayer to tell him what we want him to do for us. We come to a place of prayer with our long list of wants and demands. But there is a kind of an, an encounter that causes a man to stop saying, Lord, I want this. But to start to say, what? What would you have me do? And little by Belumu Paul, oh Saul at that time, Ebu Zugutingi Funangenzen, Utum Kulukulugena arise, go to the city, and Umuyak Leositus of Figuche, Lohutuenzan. But I want you to understand from the reading of the scriptures, Ugutagatanga, my figure city, when he just got there, he was told that there was a level of tearing, there was a level of waiting. Firstly, he had to wait about three days um, for him to see again um, and he waited few more years um, for him to get to, to, to be taught of the ways of the Lord. Um, there is always a level of tearing um, and when God is calling us to come and tarry until it's because there are things he wants us to know. There are things he wants to teach us. Yesterday we said we are called um, so that we may start to see but even as we are seeing um, there are things he wants to teach us, but they can only come from a place of tearing. And the last one I want to bring to you an encounter that changes life. It's the encounter in the upper room. They were seated there, Bazalwane, like we have mentioned, and only 120 were now seated, waiting, praying, worshipping. I believe they were there, not in a hurry, not rushing. They were waiting, unlike us, we now know it took 10 days. Ujeswa itekbona in a little while, and we all know a little while, kamkulunkulu, Uguti can be a long while for us. So they were there they were not 
they were not in a rush. They were not knowing what this was the day. I can imagine, Barcelona, allow me to imagine that they were there singing. They were there worshiping, saying, no one is like you, God. They were there worshiping him, praying like how they've been praying in the 10 days. And I also want you to recognize that some of the people that were in the upper room at that time did not come in as strong men. We have the example of Peter that we read about as well in verse, uh, in verse 14. Mazalwane, eliti baipeli upita before before the upper room experience. Sifunde ngaya epiru chesu. We saw him denying Jesus three times. We saw him hiding. So we saw him busy with strange fires because of, of, of being afraid. We saw him following Jesus from a distance. Even denying him, saying he does not know him. But here he is coming to the upper room. The beauty of the upper room. Uguti, everyone is welcomed. Everyone can come. Not only the strong and mighty. Not only the greatest intercessors. Even those who are low on power can come to the upper room. Even those that they feel they have nothing to offer can come to the upper room. But the beauty of the upper room. Uguti, you cannot be there and tarry until. Masu until figure. uda the same person. We see who Peter now in verse 14 of chapter 2 standing up and saying the same Peter who was so scared to own Jesus up. Now he is the one who is the first to explain what is happening. And out of his sermon, the first 3,000 were saved. Tell me about encounters that are changing lives. It's the upper room encounter. It's the upper room experience. It cannot leave you the same. Yes, you may feel like you are defeated. You are in the right place. You may feel like you have no strength. You are in the right place. You may feel like you are not even equipped for the journey ahead. You are in the right place. You may feel like you don't have the words to say, but you are in the right place. It's only in the upper room where our lives are changed. Just like Saul, your name can be changed to Paul as you meet God. It's only in the upper room that those that are known by the world to be abant abashupayom that the kingdom is able to change them to being abant of the kingdom come agenda. It's only in the upper room that the weak are given strength and they are able to run with the upper, with the kingdom come agenda. And tonight, Bazalwane, I want to let you know, I believe the Lord, this is what he wants us, wants to do with us. He is calling us to this place because surely he wants to give us new strength. Because surely he wants to change us. Because surely he wants us to encounter him. There are things that are waiting for us. I spoke about a generation in a generation, a generation within a generation. Only the people of the upper room can be a generation within a generation, a generation that seek the face of the Lord. And it says, We learn from the scriptures that will just choose a few when he is intentional about changing a generation for our South Africa, for our community for our nations. All God is looking is seeking for those who are seeking him. He is looking for those who are ready to tear him. Oh, there is grace even tonight. There is grace even tonight. Oh, Hashena Mahasa. There is grace even tonight. There is grace. There is grace. There is grace to tarry. And it's not just for the fun of it. But God wants us to encounter him. So that our lives firstly is changed. Just like Saul, his life has changed. But how many people were changed from a changed life? How we can influence our nation? How we can influence our society? How we can influence our communities? Even our families? It's when we encounter God. I want to say to you tonight that yes, you've been coming to church. Yes, you enjoy our worship music. Yes, you enjoy even ease. You do not 
mind to be strong on Zalwan, but that's not enough. There is an experience that you need to have. Most of us, we talk of things we have not yet experienced. Most of us, we sing of things we have not yet experienced. Yes, we have sung about him. We have talked about him, but he is to be experienced. He is to be experienced. For when we encounter him, oh, Bazalwan, we can never remain the same. Our strength in that will set us apart is not knowing about him, but it is encountering him. There is a mark that he leaves. For in my body, I carry marks. I carry signs. There are things that he leaves in us. And these things, they are here even tonight. I want to invite you. Hmm. I want to invite you. Hushana Hasaya, who even tonight, oh, he wants us to encounter him. Maybe you are here, you, 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 you love the Lord like we all do, but you realize that I have not had an encounter. Your Christian walk has just been that. It has been dull. There is nothing. There is no level. There is nothing. There, is, there are no depths in it. Tonight I want to say God wants you to experience him. He doesn't want you to just talk about him. He wants you to experience him. And tonight he wants you to encounter him. Oh, he's here to be encountered. As we are gathered on this day too in the upper room, he wants to be encountered. Hushana suka ulima sunia hase rekete de 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 sha. We bless you. We bless you, Lord. Let's sit higher. We open our eyes, our hearts. That we may encounter you. We want to encounter you. Maybe you are there. You are saying, I have encountered the Lord before. Maybe you said, I have once had an encounter. Can I tell you good news? That the encounters with the Lord, they are not meant to be once. But every day can be a day of encountering him. Atu David, would you taste and see that the Lord is good? Tonight he's yet to be tasted, he's yet to be behold, he's yet to be beheld. That as we behold him, we are transformed into his likeness. As we sit in this upper room, we are changed into his likeness. Our lives can not will not remain the same we refuse that we will talk and sing of him and remain the same we have been called to be a generation within a generation we have been called to ascend the holy hill and stand in his holy place I pray for you tonight. Who, who, as you take this time to pray, that you will experience him. Who he's here. He's here to be experienced. Hela braka tabasuna ya hase. Who is here? He's here. He's here. He's here. It's all about him. It's all about him. It's all about him. It's all about him. Heshe likata sunina saya. Who shenana ya hasa. And it's all about you. It's about him tonight. It's about him. It's about him. Rikato sina ya lasa. He wants you to experience him. I pray, I pray for you, mm, La Pekaya, that you will experience him. He wants to give us encounters that will change our lives and cause us to change our other lives. In the name of Jesus, Father, we want to say thank you. We want to thank you. Once again, we want to give you this opportunity today. We want to pray with you. La Pekaya, maybe you say, I just need this encounter. I am praying for you in Jesus' name. I feel it in my spirit that God really wants us to encounter him in this, in this upper room. 
who he wants us to encounter him he wants us to encounter the spirit of the whole the person of the holy spirit in his fullness ababe we upper room bakhulumange ilim many things happened and tonight i pray that you will encounter him who oh, may you receive new tongues may you encounter the person of the holy spirit may he not just be something and someone you talk about but may he be your reality tonight in Jesus name we pray and again if you have no never given your life to Christ today is yet another beautiful day this is another opportunity for you trust me you need to do this just write in the comment in box us let us lead you to this Christ that we are talking about let us walk with you this amazing journey and there is grace to walk it and this grace is called the spirit of the lord your destiny will thank you for it please make sure that you receive Christ do pray this prayer after me say lord jesus tonight i open my heart once again I allow you in. I recognize that you love me and I receive your love. Mm. Ngiyakholwa ngenhliziyo. I believe with my heart and I confess with my heart that you are my Lord and Savior. Thank you for being Lord over my life. In Jesus name. If you have prayed this prayer, welcome to the beloved. Welcome to the company of the beloved. Indeed, this is where it starts. But don't leave the upper room because this is where the power it's all agala corner. Thank you so much, Basalwane. May God bless you in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>